Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments. And ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey racing fans, welcome back to the Belmont Stakes edition of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap. Big weekend coming up in New York as it is the monster card on Saturday at Belmont Park. Don't forget about the beautiful cards on Thursday and Friday as well. But most fans will be looking forward to the multiple grade stakes action at Belmont on Saturday. Of course, headlined by the 11th race, the third leg of the Triple Crown, the grade one Belmont Stakes. Nyquist, the Kentucky Derby winner, will not be present at the Belmont but the Preakness winner, Exaggerator, will be, and he's listed as the 9-5 to morning line favorite. I expect him to be even lower than that for Kent and Keith DeSormo. I respect him a, a lot, as you know, as I picked him in the Kentucky Derby, and it, he won the Preakness. you got to respect him. But I have my questions on whether taking a short price is advised in this spot. Firstly, I just have never seen this horse being one that was a mile-and-a-half type runner. Sure, he's matured quite a bit and continues to get better and better, but I wonder if the mile-and-a-half is his ideal distance. Well, obviously, it's not for probably any of these, but I wonder if it is for him. And, of course, the trip he might get will be questionable as well. Will Kent DeSormo get him a little closer because this race is a little kinder tactical speed than the late runners? But if he does... Will that maybe hinder his ability to run at his best? It seems like his best races occur when he is coming with one late run unless they go really fast up front like they did in the Preakness. I don't anticipate that happening in this one. I think Exaggerator is certainly the one to beat, but worth taking a shot against if you're a gambler in this year's Belmont. Then you have the obvious contenders outside of Exaggerator, the next tier. You've got Stradivari for Todd Pletcher, who ran great in the Preakness. You've got the late running, sudden breaking news for Donnie Von Hemmel. He has a great late stride. I just wonder if this is the kind of race he'll use at his best at. Maybe a turf runner, maybe a little bit of shorter distances. You also have late running Cherry Wine, who picked up the pieces in the Preakness. I don't see it, this being his race either. And then you have the one of, in this tier that I like the most, number two, Destin, the other Todd Pletcher runner. Javier Castellano will be aboard. He ran real well in the Kentucky Derby, went probably a little further back than he really wanted to be. I expect Castellano to have him up closer, get to jump on the most of the other contenders, and I would not be surprised if he hit the wire first under Castellano. Then, if you're really going to take a shot in this race, there's a few that I think have a shot that will be tremendous overlays. Number 13, Creator, might not be the biggest of the overlays, but he had a terrible trip in the Kentucky Derby. The presence of stable mate Gettysburg should get him at least an honest pace to run at, and I like the addition of Arad Ortiz Jr. at the oval he's familiar with. Nothing against Ricardo Santana Jr., but I think Ortiz fits this horse well. He should drop him back, get him covered up. Don't be surprised if number 13 creator comes with a big late run and hits the board, and who knows if they go fast enough, maybe gets to the wire first. Then, a couple bombs. You have number 12, Brody's Cause. You know I like this horse a lot coming into the Derby before he drew the 19 post. Luis Saez, Dale Romans, they've got a nice runner. He's put up a couple poor efforts, but when he runs his race, he sure does finish well. I think his running style is a lot like Exaggerator's in that he can get the jump a little earlier than some of the true late runners. And I think at a big price, Brody's Cause is worth a look. Number 12, Brody's Cause at 20 to 1. And then the horse I'm most intrigued by, one of the new shooters in the race. Number 1, Governor Malibu. I love Christophe Clement. He knows how to win this race. This horse has done nothing wrong. I loved his last race in the Peter Pan against the highly acclaimed Unified. He almost ran down this James Jerkins runner late. I think he's coming into the race great. Clement has used the Peter Pan before with Tonalis to prep for this race. He knows how to condition his horses for long distances like the Belmont. Governor Malibu, 12 to 1 on the morning line. Joel Rosario aboard. Probably will be a horse that I bet across the board and will use in all the exotics and horizontals as well. He may get bet down a little. He also may get forgotten. It'll be interesting to see how the public perceives this one. All right, big day, big race. I understand if you like Exaggerator in this spot. If you do, maybe put them on top of my horses in the exact and the trifecta. Number two, Destin. Number 12, Brody's Cause. Number 13, Creator, and number 1, Governor Malibu. If you want to take a shot against 
the, the uh, Preakness winner. I advise definitely using number one Governor Malibu in there. And then, of course, the outside horses that I have mentioned. Regardless of what you decide to do, enjoy the incredible week of racing in New York. Topped off by graded stakes after graded stakes race. I look forward to seeing the Acorn. I look forward to seeing the return of Flintshire. Of course, the Met Mile, one of my favorite races of the year. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the racing. And we'll talk to you soon.